Hey, badass business owners, today we're going to talk about how do you mark up your products. You're probably wondering what's the best way to mark up your products, but also what the heck is markup? Well, in this video, what we're going to do is we're going to show you what is markup. We're going to explain how the formula works, and we're going to show you an example of how you can mark up your products. All right, so before we begin, it's really important you understand this number one calculation that I teach everybody, and it's gonna make sense here when we take a look at markup in a moment. Number one calculation, sales minus cost of goods minus expenses equals your profits. I preach this in every video, so if you've been watching, you hear me say this all the time. Sales minus cost of goods minus expenses equals profit. You're probably wondering, what on earth does this have to do with markup? Well, simple. We take those same four things and we just rearrange them a little bit. So we start off with your cost of goods, and then from there, we're going to add your expenses and we're going to add your profits. Now, it's these two items, your expenses and your profits, that actually are your markup. And this is where you're going to try to figure out, this. hey, this is what my cost of goods are, and this is the markup I plan to give it, which will ultimately tell me what my sales price is. So you're going to notice sales minus cost of goods minus expenses equals profits is all right here. It's just done a little differently. Now let's take a look at an example. Let's just say that you make birdhouses and you're wondering how much should you mark up your birdhouse? Well, that's what we're going to take a look at because we have our formula here. And the very first thing we start with is our cost of goods. So when we're looking at our birdhouse, we're going to say, okay, well, I have some costs involved with my birdhouse. I have wood, I have paint, I have glue and nails, and I also have labor. Now this last one is going to throw some of you off because you're thinking labor. I didn't hire anyone to do this. No, you did. You hired you. You are the labor in making your birdhouse. And it's really important that you account for that because your labor is going to be a fair wage for the employee hours you spend in your business. Now there's two different ways that you help your business out. One is as an employee doing, making the products or delivering the service. And then there's the things you do like answering the phone, talking to customers and all that. That's separate. That's something totally different. I'm talking about you have to include your labor costs when you make a product or you provide a service because it's really important that you remember as a business owner, you get paid two different ways. One is as an employee, and this is working in the business, like I said, creating the product or delivering the service. And this is where you get paid a fair wage for what it is that you do. The second way you get paid is off of the profit that the business makes. This is based off of the success of the business. But if your business isn't profitable, you're not getting paid as an owner. The only money that you've made is actually employee work. But people disguise it and think it's profit of the business, and it's not because you never captured it correctly in your cost of goods which is why you're seeing me put it in the cost of goods section. Now let's keep going with our example here. Let's just say when you make the birdhouses, you tend to make them five at a time. The reason I'm grouping this together is a lot of people mass produce the products that they serve. And it's important that you look at how you create these because that's what's really going to give you your best numbers for your cost of goods. So our business person here makes five birdhouses at a time. So when they make those birdhouses, they're going to have costs, right? Well, they're going to have wood, they're going to paint, glue, nails, etc. And they're going to have that labor just like we talked about. So let's just say when they make the five, they've got the $25 of wood that they use, paint, they use about $15 of paint, about a buck and glue, nails, etc. And for labor, it takes them four hours to put those five birdhouses together. They've decided $15 is a fair wage, which means that they have $60 worth of labor hours included in the building of these five birdhouses, which means five birdhouses cost a total of $101 in cost of goods sold. But because we're trying to figure out the price for one birdhouse, we have to take those same numbers. Five birdhouses are $101 in cost of goods. Take that to find out one birdhouse. We divide it by the five birdhouses that we made, and that's going to tell you that the cost for one birdhouse is $20.20. That's our cost of goods for this one birdhouse. And we're going to use that now to figure out how to price. We go back to our handy dandy little calculation that we have. And we know the cost of goods now, right? We know it's $20 and 20 cents. So we plug that into our calculation. Next up, we have to figure out how much are we going to mark this silly birdhouse up for? Well, in order to do that, we start over here with expenses. Now, what do you put in expenses? Remember, expenses are the other expenses you have to run your business. So this could be like insurance if you happen to have it. It could be uh, rental equipment that you have to buy. Maybe they haven't been able to purchase uh, a specific piece of equipment they need for these birdhouses, so they rent it temporarily. 
whatever the case may be. In our example, our business owner has $150 a month in operational expenses. And they also know they have about 50 birdhouses they do a month. So knowing that, they take the $150 divided by the 50 birdhouses, which means that each birdhouse has to set aside $3 in order for them to pay their operational expenses expenses. So we're going to take that $3 and we're going to move it over here to our calculation and we're going to replace expenses with the $3. Now the next thing the business owner has to decide is how much profit they want to make off of each birdhouse. Well they're already being paid as an employee so they've got some of that money set aside but the next thing is they're like hey I want to make $5 on every birdhouse. So we're going to take this profit section here and we're going to switch it over to $5. Now you probably have gathered that the markup, they're going to mark up their birdhouse over here by $8. It's going to be the $3 plus the $5. So the markup on the birdhouse is $8. Now when we're coming down here to sales price, we just add it together. $20 and 20 cents plus $8 comes out to $28.20. You'll see that I have minimum sales price. In order for them to hit their goals, this is the minimum price they need to set it at. Now that doesn't mean they can't sell it for $30, $32. It just means that in order to hit their goals, it's got to be at minimum $28.20 to hit what it is that they're seeking. But this isn't it, all right? Now, one of the things that's really important you understand is you really have to know your business numbers. It's key to the profits because a lot of people weren't even including the labor and then they wouldn't even have thought about it. They would have just said, hey, I want to make 60 bucks for these birdhouses. Well, guess what? That was part of their labor. It wasn't part of the profits because you have the two different hats. So it's really important you know the profits because at the end of the day, you're in a business. Your goal is to make money, to make profits, not to be paid like an employee. In order for you to get the profits to make the money, you've got to understand your numbers. And it all starts with this number one calculation that I said earlier, sales minus cost of goods minus expenses equals profits, because that's going to help you understand better the markup version of this whole thing, which is cost of goods sold, plus your expenses, plus your profits. Remember, expenses and profits is your markup, and that's how you're going to determine your sales price. So it's taking the same calculation, rearranging it a little bit, and letting you understand what your markup is. And if you like what you see, do me a favor, hit that like button, because honestly, that's what tells people that they really should watch this video if they want to understand more about markup. Now get out there and be the badass business owner that I know you are.